Good morning. It is Thursday, July 18th. I'm your host, Kimberly Perot, and welcome to Good Morning Vale. We have a quite the jam-packed show for you today, and you're not going to want to miss it. Now, you're probably still planning out those summer vacations, and you're going to want to hear, see my conversation with the auto car guy, Nick Miles. He's talking all about road trip hidden gems and beyond. Plus, we have Donaldson coaching. Vale Valley Theater is doing their production of Cabaret. And then we have a brand new segment called Divine Design. And man, it's going to be featuring some of our local interior designers and artists. So all of that gets started and let's kick it off right now. Nashville Roadhouse Live, where country meets rock and roll. It's where I drank my first beer, where I found Jesus, where I read my first car, I tore it all to pieces. Join us every week for more live performances right here on Nashville Roadhouse Live. Did you know that all Eagle County residents and visitors can get a free Eagle Valley Library District card? All you need is a photo ID. You get our online databases and resources, free music, free streaming, all from wherever you have internet access. Free audiobooks and e-audiobooks straight to your phone. Go into your Eagle Valley Library District branch today and get your library card. Hi there! Are you ready to explore famous neighborhoods from New York City to Kentucky? Watch The Neighborhood with host Nicole Newman. Featuring famous people, unique history and delicious places to eat and drink. Our viewers get an inside personal look at each neighborhood. With each episode we learn, grow, laugh, and live like a local, not just a visitor. Welcome to The Neighborhood. Check your local program schedule and tune in.
It is always a pleasure to interview Vail Valley Theatre about their upcoming productions. They do such an excellent job of selecting classics and some fun modern twists as well. They have their brand new production, Cabaret, which is currently ongoing through the rest of the weekend. Let's take a look at that conversation. We've got a full couch now. We've got the Vail Valley Theatre Company's Cabaret. Some of the cast is here. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Nice to be here. Very quickly, I just want to go down the line and introduce yourselves and the character that you play. I'm Jen Saito. I'm a Kit Kat girl. I'm Grace Bogansky. I'm Fräulein Schneider. Okay. And I'm Steve Toffler, and I play Herr Schultz. And I'm John Mauer, and I'm a Kit Kat boy. Okay, awesome. Um, cabaret, it's coming up quick. Uh, it's the 16th through the 21st, right? That's it. Yeah. Yes. So July 16th through the 21st at Chasing Rabbits. Okay. That's a first, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the first time that, that, that Vail Valley Theater has actually performed in that space, and it's going to be very, very unique, turning a restaurant into a cabaret space for this show. So. Yeah, and it's a beautiful space there. It's um, got tons of room in there. What's kind of a challenge with using that as your stage or building a stage in there? Well, like uh, Steve said, it's turning a restaurant into a cabaret. We have a stage that we will disassemble, move into the space, and then set up chairs and tables and a back wall and props and costumes and everything else bringing into a restaurant space to make it a theater. Amazing, amazing. And Cabaret is such a classic story. Um, can one of you just describe kind of the storyline without spoiling too much? Sure. I mean, I'll start, I'll jump in here. I mean, Cabaret takes place in uh, 1929. It's the end of the Weimar Republic in Germany, a time of, you know, opulence and decadence and, and fun, and it transitions into the beginning of the Nazi regime. And it's what happens to the people who are trying to live their lives um, and what happens when a government comes in and everything changes. Yes. Um, I play um, a German Jewish character who falls in love with this young lady here um, and it's a story of you know hope and despair at the same time. Definitely so, and some great songs and classics. In for, there. Sure, yeah. for sure, for um, sure. How's the cast looking? Is, a, is it a lot of the regular folks? How's the Vale Valley Theatre Company looking these days and, and kind of who can we expect out there? Very healthy. There's, uh, the cast is local of course. Um, there's 17 members of the cast, so we've got dancers and singers and actors and all three. Um, and Vail Valley Theater Company, of course, has been around for over 20 years in the Valley. And this is the first time even for Vail Valley Theater Company to be in this kind of space. So it's not, not even for the veterans is it something that's old hat. It's kind of new for all of us. Yeah, the audience is actually going to be as close as we are to each other to the stage. So uh -huh. it's a very, very unique experience for actors and making sure you can stay in character and still, you know, tell our story to the audience. Right, right. So as Kit Kats, is that like an exciting thing to be that close or is that like a nervous thing to be that close? Or both? I would say it's exciting because I like to play with people and yeah. just like <laughs> being there. Yeah, yeah, awesome. It definitely creates a more immersive experience for theater because we're kind of going through the tables and, you know, it's, it's more fun to play to people then, you know, too. Definitely. How have rehearsals been going? Great. Long and, uh, and arduous, <laughs> but uh, we're getting ready. You know? We're, we're yeah. less than a week away. We're feeling good about it, right? Yes. That's right. And there'll be live music on stage as well. So yes. it's not, not canned music, it's live music. So that's another whole uh, level to add to the kind of uh, intimacy that you find in a yeah. nightclub. So, I mean, I think we, we've sold it enough here. Where can people get tickets and how can they get involved? The BillValleyTheater.org website. Awesome. You can buy tickets and... They're going fast, yeah. so yeah, if you want to see the show, I would recommend that you get your tickets very soon. Um, it goes from the 16th to 21st every night, and the doors open at 6, so people can go in and sit down, have a cocktail, have some food, and the show starts at 7. Okay, awesome. And I understand this is the director's first time working with you guys, is that right? Um, well, yeah, certainly we're first time working with us. I'm not sure what he's done with Vail Valley Theater in the past. Yeah, David Meyer is the, is the drama um, guy out at Battle Mountain High School. Okay. And he's been involved with Vail Valley Theater for a long time. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's the first time, personally anyway, that I've been directed by David. He's great. Yeah? He's How, what you, how's it like working with David? He's oh, amazing. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's got a great vision and you know, we're, we're also, um, I think for the first time we're doing a prologue that involves other people outside of our cast. And so from the, the second that you enter Chasing Rabbits, it's gonna be an entire experience. Awesome. And there's dining options, there's drinks, so there's, there's just a whole 
it's a whole different ballgame than what we're yeah. used to. Yeah. 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 Cabaret recently, you know, opened again on in the West End in London and on Broadway, and they did a similar thing, turning the Broadway theaters into cabarets. Okay. And that's basically the format we're trying to follow here as well. So Perfect. I think we're trying to be true to the, those uh, productions that are going on right now. Very cool, very cool. I mean, one of the cool things about living in this valley is it's so small. But how awesome is it that you have this opportunity and Vail Valley Theater Company brings all you guys together? Like, how, how cool is that that we have that here, VB? Absolutely. Really and we, we cool. continue to build into the community as well. We have improv classes, we've got workshops, we do choir co classes and dance classes. Um, so we're always trying to recruit new members and uh, spread our spread our wings into yeah. the community. Yeah, because it's, it's a creative outlet, right? Absolutely. So it's probably fun for you guys to be able to do this, right? Yeah, we all have a passion for theater and live performances, and this is a chance for us to do that and share what we love with an audience, a local audience. So it's great, and hope everybody here can come out and see the show. Definitely, definitely. What else is going on this summer? What, what happens? What happens after cabaret? Um, we all sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to hiking and yeah, biking yeah, and golf yeah. and enjoying this great, amazing valley. So. Yeah. But you know, Vail Valley Theater Company is a not-for-profit, so you know, there's always things behind the scenes going on, and um, there's a fundraiser or a couple of fundraisers usually uh, every year. Yeah. Um, and there's so much talent in this valley. It's, yes. it's yeah. pretty remarkable. It so. is. It is. What are the costumes like? Can't you tell? <laughs> this, this, this is not what we wear normally walk around the streets here. That's but right. Wearing uh, I, didn't, I didn't wear this skiing the last time. Uh, I uh, <laughs> but we try to be really true to the period. Um, and thankfully in the Valley, we have some great resources for costuming. And we know the various thrift shops and other things. And in Denver, um, we've all, again, try to look the period. And David's done a great job of matching up what was going on at the time and trying to make sure that we look like we do, like we belong in Germany in 1929. Yeah, definitely. Now, the Kit Kat girls, do not look like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. A little more like this. Yeah, a little more risque and fun. So. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What's, uh, what's been kind of the most fun thing about this specific one? I know you guys have done a couple or multiple, but what's kind of different or unique about doing cabaret? Um, for me, it's again, it's, it's a great, great show that we get to, you know, we create in, in our own voice. Um, this is my first production with Vail Valley Theater, and I got to meet some amazing people and, you know, become part of the family. And theater is a family, and this whole process has been amazing for me to meet new people and to do what we love. Yeah. What about you guys? Absolutely. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I, I think it's, you know, coming together as a cast and, you know, just really developing these characters, you know, you start to get attached to the people that, you know, you're working with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> and we, like you said, we become family and it's just, I think that's just a beautiful process. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, July 16th is the first show. First show. Um, what are you guys most looking forward to? Getting, getting out there. this show started. Getting out of yeah. rehearsal yeah. and performing for a live audience. <laughs> so what's the audience. next week look like, the last week rolling into it? Well, we are at, at rehearsals. rehearsals every, every night. Day. And then um, we will load into the space, which means bringing all our props and costumes and stage and everything this weekend. And then we start rehearsing in the space. And then the show goes up. In yeah. theater, the last week before a show is called Hell Week, and there's okay. a reason for it because we're all working, you know, until late hours at night and during the daytime, and um, trying to get this production up and running. So yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's been tiring, but it will the end result will be amazing. Yeah, and, and again, chasing rabbits. What a unique venue yeah. um, to to yeah. do that. And they, they have been wonderful, wonderful. To, yeah, yeah. to allow us to use their space and the the co collaboration uh, among. Vail Valley Theater Company and Chasing Rabbits and the actors. It's just incredible, but it's part of the Valley. Yeah. That's what goes on. Absolutely. Well, as a community organization, Vail Valley Theater Company, who else do you guys work with or what other kind of organizations do you partner with? Um, well, let's see. We Last summer, we did Tina and Tony's wedding, and we were at um, the Grand Hyatt, the Grand okay, Hyatt awesome. yeah. which was another immersive theater experience. Um, awesome. That was awesome. lots of fun. And I know Vail Valley Theater Company does a lot out at Route 6 when they're doing their fundraisers <laughs> yeah. and reviews and so forth. So, Yeah, we love Ollie at Route 6. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome, awesome. Um, what else should people know about Cabaret? Anything else? They need to get their tickets fast. It's a great show. It's going to be a lot of fun. They will see their friends up on stage performing like they've probably never seen them before. I love that. And yeah. um, it's, it's called A Cautionary Tale. Yeah. I mean, so considering the times that we're living in. What's amazing, I mean, the cabaret was first produced on Broadway in 1966, and the message it had back then is so um, prevalent and you know, timely today. 
Um, like she's, uh, Grace was saying, it's a cautionary tale of what can happen if people become complacent um, and you know, don't <laughs> let the government um, take over their lives. Yeah. People have to be active in what they do, and, and again, what's going on in our government sure. today, it's really, really timely. It's, it's funny and not funny, it's ironic yes, kind exactly. of how that works, exactly. right? So um, it's, a, it's uh, an enjoyable performance, but it also can turn dark and have a, a strong message about what people should be aware of. Definitely, definitely. One more time, what's the website to get their tickets? RealValleyTheater.org. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Coming in great character, and um, yeah, we're really looking forward to that one. So it's the 16th through the 21st, though, right? Yes, so yeah, correct. Six performances. Six performances. So definitely get those tickets now if you can, and uh, check out the Vale, vale uh, Valley Theater Company all year round. That's right. Yep. Around. Yep. That's right. Always, always up to something. something. There's always something. Always up to around. something. Thanks so much again, and stay tuned. We'll be right back with the rest of the show. Welcome aboard. Bobby Lori and Nikki Noya have your ticket to everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. Grab your boarding pass. It's time to jet set. This is Necklace. This easy-to-use, non-surgical alternative improves the appearance of sagging skin around your neck and jawline. Made from medical-grade tape, Necklace lasts up to 10 hours, giving you a firmer, smoother look all day long. This is the one that works. Starting on one side, peel off to expose adhesive and affix it beneath your earlobe. Stretch the strip around the back of your neck until it reaches the other side. Remove the white backing from the other end of the strip and attach under the other earlobe. Go ahead and take your hair down. Wow, look at that. Necklace really is the one that works. Women everywhere are thrilled with the results. Necklace is my time machine and I'm loving life again. Necklace is way better than surgery. It's cheaper and it's easier. Oh wow, to fight these years off here. <laughs> well, I like it. It's like a mini facelift. Oh, it totally works. Think I need a box, a box or two. Use the on-screen QR code or visit sagnomore.com to order now. We even give you a money back guarantee. Try Necklace today. Learn the latest in science each week and how it relates to everyday life. From space exploration, to plant biology, to the latest in high-tech advances. Every new scientific development is explored and explained in an understandable way. Amazing stories each week. Watch Science Now. Daily Flash Latino. Designed for the American Latino audience, Daily Flash Latino hosts Jessica Reyes and Fabian Marcano deliver their fresh perspective on the latest entertainment news, celebrity gossip, fashion, health, and more in both English and Spanish, a.k.a. Spanglish. Daily Flash Latino builds, connects, and celebrates the diverse Hispanic audience. Daily Flash Latino. Trending news and entertainment with a splash of Spanglish. You know TV8 Vale has great local content, but did you know about our production services? Hire an expert to develop your website reel, commercials, live stream events, studio production, and more. If you can dream it, we can help you do it. TV8 delivers high quality content in both English and Spanish. Contact us today to discuss your next project. Email Danielle at tv8vale.com or call 970-628-9881. The Paltrowcast is an award-winning weekly series featuring exclusive interviews with entertainers, athletes, and other influencers. Tune in weekdays at 10 a.m. to see where the conversation takes us. Paltrowcast. Good morning, Vail. It's always so important to continue in your personal growth, whether it's physically, mentally, professionally, and beyond. Donaldson Coaching is here to help. Let's take a look at that conversation. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Covered Bridge on TV8. I'm Kim Fuller, Editor-in-Chief of Covered Bridge Magazine. I'm Bobby LaRue, the Director of Partnerships at Covered Bridge Magazine, and today we have the pleasure of sitting down with Brett and Tam Donaldson of Donaldson Coaching. Uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. So Brett and Tam are also the co-founders of The Cycle Effect, which is a very well-known nonprofit here in Eagle County, and have the pleasure of working with a lot of athletes. And so the article that we worked with them on in the abundance issue of Covered Bridge is called There's No I in Athlete. And I had the pleasure of 
working with Donaldson Coaching for the summer months in running and mountain biking mostly to train. And so it's really a reflection on why I believe and have found and also um, you know, by interviewing the two of you, why it's important to have a coach mm -hmm. in this process. So give us a little background on your, your fitness, your athleticism. I know you both participate in a lot of races throughout the year here locally and around the country. So Tam, why don't you start with a little bit of background on on you. Um, ski school uh, was kind of where I started and what brought me over here. Um, so skiing is something that I love to do. And uh, then when we got married, America was going to be like our home base. So I would follow the winters and clearly then I had four seasons in a year, which was kind of novel and I didn't know what to do with myself in the summer because I'm so used to being next to an ocean. Um, long story, got a bike. First experience on a mountain bike was awful, um, but ended up falling into triathlon. Then that turned into Xterra triathlon. Um, I guess strong legs, skiers legs, they happen to have um, a good advantage at riding. Um, loved that, did, got reasonably competitive at that, started racing pro. Um, that just turns into a full-time job if you want to keep going with it. And then started um, training, personal training at the Western. And in amongst that, we've always been like training people outside of that that um, don't quite know how to structure their training. Um, and consistently from there, mountain bike races, um, running races, then we got into longer races of like the Breck Epic, so three day to five, six day stage races, which was fun because that was something that we could do together. People thought we were crazy, but mm -hmm. it worked out great. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. You really have the experience in all those different types of racing to, right. to help an athlete. Yeah. How about you, Brett? Um, I mean, I was a college athlete, but it, not I call myself a mediocre <laughs> athlete. Um, so when Tam got into triathlon and stuff like that, I wanted to ride bikes as well. So I really kind of took a back seat for a, a few years um, as she was doing that, uh, which was awesome because she got to really develop into that athlete. And now we have life partners that like to do these things all the time. So um, I, when I turned 40, I basically decided I wanted to be able to do these events for the next 20, 30 years if I choose. And so it's really, um, I've kind of restructured how I view athletics. I didn't really enjoy it in my 30s very much. It was, there's a pressure and I thought I should be able to do X, Y, Z. And now it's just like, I get to be out there. It's super fun, it's hard, it's challenging. But, um, so now I spend time riding and running in the VRD series, I mean, that's like, it's a great series. I love how they put on their events. It's super casual. It's easy. Like, I don't know why more people don't do it. It's here. It's a great challenge. And then um, now that they've got winter, you know, schema races and stuff like that, I do those. Um, I don't have anything huge on my schedule app, but besides those right now, but I'm sure we'll find another five or 10 races to do this summer outside mm -hmm. of that series. Mm -hmm. So, great. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's no I in athlete. There's no I in team. I love the title of all of that. Um, but when it comes to coaching, when or why would someone necessarily get a coach? Sure. Because, um, you know, I question that myself as being an athlete and then watching her go through it. What's the, what's the start and then what can one expect, I guess? Yeah. I think um, for me, it all boils down to you hire a coach so you don't make emotional choices. Whether you're feeling great and you keep going and going and going and you overload your system too much, or you're feeling awful and you decide I'm not gonna work out today when really that was just a mental block and you could be out there doing stuff. So for many athletes, especially in this valley, we're pulling them back on the effort they put in. They, they, they think they need to be a world champion or their next door neighbor was an ex world champion and they try to train like them. It's like, that's not how, how you should do it. So we manage people's time and we manage people's emotions around their training a lot. Um, and then, of course, there's skill development, there's race strategy, there's all these other things, but you can read about that in books a lot of the time, but a lot of it is, for me, just managing the person so that they are set up to do the things they want to do, whether that's a 5K, whether that's a 100-mile run, bike races, whatever. Yeah, so essentially removing some of those roadblocks of, like, I'm too tired, or, like you said, I need to put in 
another 10 miles today. Yes. No. This valley generally goes too hard. Mm-hmm. And, and our mountain towns, right? I mean, we're all like super uh, enthusiastic about it. We generally go too hard for too much time, you know, of the time you have allotted to training. Mm-hmm. Right, so many yeah. fun things to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure you've worked with, and I know you have worked with a range of athletes. I mean, with the cycle effect, you're working with young teenage girls on mountain bikes, and then all the way up to, I don't know how old your oldest client is, but they all have different goals and different skills. So, Tam, how do you balance that when you work with an individual athlete mm-hmm. um, and you, you know, you might be doing one thing with one and another thing with another, and so how do you create a plan specifically? Yeah. Um, and I think individual is, is where the coach comes in because someone who's 21, I mean, they can do a lot of volume and a lot of intensity. Uh, as I age myself, I notice the difference at, you know, 40, late 40s. I can't put in the same intensity. So it's kind of balancing when those are, making sure that the athlete that you have, depending on whatever age they're at, um, that you're balancing recovery. Because it's the more you are good about your recovery, the more sessions you can actually fit in. Mm -hmm. Um, And whether you've got a mother who is like, hey, I've got 45 minutes, and, that, and that's it. So how do we make the most of that? And then somebody else who maybe has a little bit more relaxed schedule. So um, yeah, you can always find like a PDF or something to follow in a book or on paper by, I think, customizing it to your life. I was actually just talking with an athlete the other day, and they love ticking the boxes. And every now and then, it's there has to be a little bit of coach athlete communication, even on those days. That if you're not feeling that great, reach out and be like, okay, maybe we need to tweak this. It sounds like you might be starting to get sick, and we need to back things off a little bit. Um, I think that's important because a lot of the time you just ignore, you know, think I should, you know, do all of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the quote from the article, there's no I an athlete in this current issue that Tam provided reads, it's hard to look at ourselves objectively. A coach can customize a training plan that fits your work, family, and social schedules. A coach accelerates your progress by helping you make the best use of your time. We're here for a good time, not a long time. Let's work on things that are going to make the most gains. Yeah. Love that. And, yeah. and I, would, I would add one more thing. I think that having one pretty good plan is much better than having four excellent plans. Because four excellent plans, people are picking what they want to do and they're, they're skipping the things they don't want to do. And so um, I don't think you need to hire the most accomplished, world-renowned coach in the entire world. You need to hire somebody that you resonate with, that kind of understands your, um, your sport that you want to get into and stuff like that. But really, you need to commit to that person for maybe six months or something like that. Like if somebody comes to me and says, Brett, I want you to write me a plan for a month, I'm like, I have no desire to do that because I just I know that it doesn't really move the needle very much. And so I think hiring one person or finding a book and saying, like, this is the book I'm going to commit to and stuff like that. That's better than four excellent plans because people just, you know, we're so unfocused and we you know, we see something on Instagram. We're like, oh, I'm going to go do that, too. Yeah. Like maybe we shouldn't do all of the things mm-hmm. because we just don't have the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As someone who got to kind of watch the coaching and participate um, as <laughs> the significant other, it was interesting to see the days that you made sure Kim had recovery. Because on those days, generally prior to the coaching plan, she would have still gone out and done something. But then the other days where it was like these pain cave type interval (laughs) sessions, it's really difficult, I would say personally, to force myself to do that without a plan. Mm -hmm. And again, I was not necessarily on the plan, but I was on the plan following her. And Mm -hmm. some of those days, yeah, they, they are rough. And I also think what I noticed was a couple times during her training, you would be like, you are getting fatigued. Back off. Today you don't need to do the full workout or you don't need to always be an A student if you're not feeling well. And I, I think that to me was, again, as the, the outsider looking in, was mm-hmm. the most valuable part of it. Yeah. Because it is easy to just, like, like you said, you know, do the things that really feel good and then ignore the things that don't and then also not recover because you're like, oh, well, I want to go skiing today or I want to yeah. do this. And it's like Brett or Tam would put in like absolutely nothing today. Yeah, and Kim would have to, you know. Well, and and I'm the same. Like, 
I know all the things, but I still get caught in that trap where, so if this was the first year ever that I asked Tam to be my coach, okay. right? After like 20 years <laughs> yeah. where we sh you're like, we should like, not coach should each other. That? It's not, it's not good for us. Yeah. I said, you know what? You know me better than ever. You know my goals better than anybody else. Like, and so like I would walk into the kitchen some mornings. I'm like, I am exhausted. And she's like, oh, you should take the day off. Or, or, you know, things like that. And so, like, everybody needs a sounding board on some level. And I think that's really what the coach is. And um, they're not also going to be that sounding board friend that just says, like, oh, you're just, you know, take the week off. Or, like, you're feeling like there, there's some accountability because they want to mm -hmm. see you hit your results. But they also know, like, like mm, you're meant to be fatigued today. Like, suck it up. This go. is yeah. two days of intensity because we're building for a certain mm -hmm. thing. You're like, you're meant to not feel great today, but that's the point of this training. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, to his point, it, it's really hard to be objective. Um, and it does, it takes, it takes the decision making process out of it. And it takes the pressure off the individual of like, I don't have to decide what to do today. That you just wake up, you look at your plan, and go. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that can free up an enormous amount of like time, but also mental space for somebody yeah. that they can just be at ease, not be thinking like, am I doing the right thing? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is taking care of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I just love the fact that you brought up, because I was going to ask that question, like coaches get coaches, right? Absolutely. And I think totally. Not mm -hmm. just you guys, I've heard it from fitness instructors in town that have their own coaches, right? And like, yeah. Yeah, we look up to you as a coach, but it's pretty awesome that you, you, you take your own prescribed medicine. For sure. And I think that's with business. That's like with anything. Like with the cycle effect, I have, I don't know, 10 to 20 mentors. I am calling them all the time being like, hey, you know, I don't know what to do here. What should I do? And stuff like that. So I think that everybody should have a coach or a mentor in their major walks of life, whether it's relationships or work or whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm a firm believer and I am not the smartest guy in the room and <laughs> I need to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. So I, like that. I was about to say there's no I in life, but there is an I. In life, so, um. I'm glad as an editor <laughs> yeah. of a magazine, you are able to figure, figure this out. out. Yes. Yeah. 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 So let, let's talk briefly about the cycle sure. effect. I mean, this was the 10 year anniversary yep. of the nonprofit, which yep. does that feel like it's gone really quickly or is it, you know, I'm just, D depends on, depends on a day. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think that, uh, so the cycle effect, real quick, is um, high school, middle school girls in four different counties, uh, Mesa County, Rowe County, Eagle, and Summit, and we help them ride and race mountain bikes and go to college is like the real short elevator pitch. We focus on working with BIPOC communities, which here is mostly the Latina community. Um, so yeah, and we provide everything they could possibly need. It's a year-round program. It's, it's amazing. And going back to the 10 years, like, I can honestly say we love what we do. Is it super challenging sometimes? Of course, like anything that's worth doing. Um, but we love the relationships we've built. We love the community that we've built um, and our staff and, and things like that. And so, yeah, Tam and I started it 10 years ago and we're still going strong. So we're looking at potential new growth in the you know coming year to two. And um, we're, you know, we're redefining things. We're always evolving how we do things because we know that what worked four years ago doesn't work now. Mm -hmm. So we're, mm -hmm. we're always growing. Awesome. Well, yeah. it's been a pleasure, um, number one, learning from you guys, um, from the coaching aspect. It's been a pleasure watching the cycle effect grow and having you guys in our community. And we really appreciate everything that you bring to, to this lovely valley and now many other valleys sure. um, in the state mm -hmm. of Colorado. So mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. And, uh, we'll let you guys know how you can reach out to Brett and Tam if you're interested in training with them mm -hmm. or have people that might be interested in the Cycle Effect programming. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, yeah thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. Definitely check out Donaldson Coaching and the Cycle Effect. And thank you for watching Covered Bridge on TV8. Enjoy the journey. coverage of the top stories in sports. The Sports Wrap with Jason Page starts now. How do you make Anthony Edwards the face of your franchise if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves? We'll get into that. And we say hello to a good friend, Matt Verderam, who hangs out with us uh, from SI.com. Their NFL insider, one of them, uh, is hanging out with us on the program today. Did you see Caitlin Clark last night? She put up a 40-burger. Hits the game-winning three as time expires. 
Let's turn our attention to the Denver Broncos, one of the NFL's most dysfunctional situations. The Sports Wrap with Jason Page. From small towns to big cities and everywhere in between, we're covering the great things that are happening right now in the USA. This is Positively America with Ernie Anastas. Each week, we're going to focus on the great things that are happening every day in the USA. We'll feature change makers. In every older person, there's a younger person saying, how did this happen? Innovators. I talk about design the way some people might talk about, like, the person they're in love with. Doers and dreamers. You can use that recognition to pay it forward. Ordinary Americans accomplishing extraordinary things. When you smile, you receive one back most of the time. We're going to prove to you that optimism and hope are paving the way to an even brighter tomorrow. We've got a lot of programs that are specifically focused on the children of our fallen heroes. At Positively America, our mission is to feature good news. For the latest and greatest trends in pop entertainment, Pop Star Today brings you compelling celebrity lifestyle stories that matter most to you. From movies, music, TV, and streaming shows, to fashion, social media influencers, and the latest on who is seeing who. Join host Elizabeth Stanton as she digs deep and dives in. This is Pop Star Today. I had a very fun conversation with auto enthusiast Nick Miles talking all about the ninth annual Camp Mini Road Trip and how you can find hidden gems as you're preparing and planning your road trips this summer. Let's take a look. Now it's summertime and we are in the height of the travel season and what that usually means is a fun adventure road trip. Joining me today is an expert in the road trip realm, Nick Miles, to talk about all the things that he has been on, all the adventures across the U.S. and how to find some hidden gems and beyond. Nick, how are you this morning? I am great and thank you for having me. Well, it looks like you were road trip ready with uh, the display you've got on site behind you. So let's talk a little bit about road trips. How do you turn them into an actual fun adventure where it's not stressing out anybody that's doing the planning and the long miles that you may have ahead of you? You said the key word there, planning, and that is if you fail to plan, you really plan to fail a road trip. It's getting things ready uh, and being flexible as well when you get out on the road. Uh, have a destination in mind, but remember it's really about the journey and things that you see and enjoy along the way. So one of the things that we've been doing here, we're on Mini Takes the States, it goes from Albuquerque, New Mexico, all the way to Seattle, Washington, over nine days, five states, uh, nine different major cities. The idea with this road trip is 
we have a destination in mind, but we experience fun things along the way, and we're making sure that we have a couple of key places we want to visit, but as we come across the great jerky shop in Colorado, or we come across the, the great view somewhere, that we spend time and we enjoy things as we come across them. Well, I love that you mentioned that, especially if you're driving through our valley here. We've got lots of exciting off the, off, off the beaten path things to check out. Now, speaking of road trips, you know, oftentimes you are packing everything into the vehicle and then you don't really have much space to be comfortable as you're spending long hours on the road. Can you explain how we can be creative in our use of space within the vehicle? Absolutely. So I really started my career off as a producer. So I think about things logically and progressively. I think about what do I need in everyday life. So I charge my devices, make sure I have charging cables. I drink and I eat. Snacks are really important, probably the most important thing on a road trip, but also having the right fluid to hydrate there. And if you're bringing kids along, making sure that they have entertainment, making sure if you bring your pets along that they're comfortable in a vehicle. Think about what you'll need throughout the days. Do you have tissues? Do you have Kleenex for those things like the spills of the grape juice on the back seat. Those type of things. Think about the scenarios that you go through in every day with your whole family or with anyone you're traveling with and just really have a small travel size version of those. Being in a Mini, Mini Takes the States, I'm in the new Countryman. It's still a Mini, but it has lots of space, but I utilize that space well. Bringing the little travel size uh, mouthwash, bringing the travel size versions of things, and not packing excessive things that I need. I'm not bringing the winter coat, I'm bringing shorts and t-shirts. That's the smartest thing to do. You know, I think most products now are being sold in travel sizes, and there are plenty of containers to help with that. Now, you mentioned Mini. Camp Mini, tell us about the theme and the summer's largest road trip. Absolutely. So the big charities this year are Keep America Beautiful. They're the charity partner as well as the American Camp Association. And they've done a lot of work in getting camps and getting things ready for those people that want to do road tripping. I mean, Keep America Beautiful has supplied us with all this information about national parks, which are over 400 in the United States. There are over 6,000 uh, state parks in the United States. And Keep America Beautiful really helps us understand what we can see, what we can do, and where we can go in this beautiful country and some of the attractions that you can see that are a little bit off the beaten path. Well, you talked earlier in this conversation about you know allowing time for things that maybe aren't planned but you're planning appropriately. Now I love the idea of helping keep America beautiful so how can you incorporate volunteering into your road trip? Well, this is a big thing for me. So I'm a big dog rescuer. I do, uh, I rescue dogs all the time. It's kind of my passion here. I like to go to cities and, uh, and walk dogs from the local shelter, or perhaps you like to go and plant trees. You can find a lot of these things online. Got a little surprise for you here. Bagel, <laughs> this is Bagel. Bagel is from Utah Beagle Rescue. And Bagel, uh, I went to Utah Beagle Rescue and said, can I walk this dog? And they said, yes, absolutely. So Bagel's been my walking partner while I've been here in uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, one of the things you can do is find a local shelter and see if they'll let you walk their dogs. Well, he definitely looked excited and a little bit camera shy at the same time. So <laughs> that is such a fun uh, idea and, and ways to incorporate some interesting things into your road trip. Now, let's talk a little bit about in incorporating hidden gems. Can you tell us about some of them? Absolutely. So that's exactly what you do whether you do planning as well. Uh, I went all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We've made it up to Utah so far. We didn't expect to see a lot of the stuff that we saw. So we came across some of those mining towns in Colorado. Uh, we stopped and we went in and we looked at some of the old railways. Uh, I came across a beef jerky store, which I had no idea was, was there in Grand Junction. Uh, tasted some of the best snacks you can. I didn't expect to find one of the best funnel cakes stores I've ever found and plus visiting food carts and local restaurants along the way is one of the best things that you can actually do. Uh, that all sounds incredible. Beef jerky store, sign me up. Now Nick, where can we go for more information and to follow along the journey? Minitakesthestates.com is the website. You can do that and you can see there uh, Keep America Beautiful and uh, the, camp Amer the American Camp Association. They have their portals there. But you can also follow the social media trip that we're doing right now at MiniUSA or the hashtag MTTS2024, uh, which is Mini Takes the States or MTTS2024. You can see the picture and you can also, pictures of all of us enjoying our road trip, the dogs, the folks with their minis as they drive across America. It's a really great trip, great trip, and I will tell you, following us on social media is almost as fun as being here. 
Well, Nick Miles, pop culture fun guy, adventure road trip expert. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We certainly appreciate having you on the show. Absolutely, and happy motoring. <laughs> Thanks so much. Now stay tuned, we'll be back with more right after this. Good morning, Vale. Take the first game every one of us played in the schoolyard. Turn up the degree of difficulty to maximum, and then let loose some of the fastest and most agile athletes in the world to go one-on-one -on -one in what you have is the most extreme pursuit contest you've ever known. It's intense, it's addictive, and there's only one rule. Don't get caught. And if you haven't seen World Chase Tag before, here's how it works. Two teams of up to six athletes compete in a series of one-on-one -on -one chases. Each chase lasts up to 20 seconds and has one chaser and one evader. Opportunity to punch on the board! Oh! Whoever wins the duel stays on as the evader, and teams get one point for each evasion they make. And it looks like the opening point for this competition! It's the best of 16 chases to win the match, with a sudden death chase off required to break any ties. It's win or go home from now on. Don't miss it. Join us on the famous Leadville Railroad. This historic train ride takes you on an unforgettable trip through the heart of the Rockies for an afternoon of adventure, relaxation, and sightseeing. Our scenic train rides are a perfect place to bring families closer together while immersing them in the natural beauty and rich history of this picturesque region. Enjoy the spectacular Colorado scenery. Even meet the engineer. Make memories that will last a lifetime. Tickets available at LeadvilleRailroad.com. Coming up this season on Ready, Set, Renovate, we see one couple fall in love with a waterfront fixer-upper. Just It sort of wrapped its arms around us and said, you, you want me, and we did. <laughs> <laughs> and watch as another battles over the budget. We're trying to look through and see what we can trim at this point. Are you, are you looking to trim it, Ginger? No. No. Construction pros show us the right way to renovate. Well, we had to do a roof over. We had to hand build a lot of the trusses. As we're putting the thin set down, the, the self leveler has a little clip that clips up underneath the edge of the tile. TV8 te brinda la mejor programación en español todos los días. Sintoniza Conexión Latina los lunes, miércoles y viernes a las 7 de la tarde con repeticiones los fines de semana. Además, te presentamos nuestro nuevo programa Sabores y Creaciones, donde hemos juntado tus recetas y manualidades favoritas en un solo lugar los martes y jueves a las 7 de la tarde. Y por último, disfruta de Daily Flash Latino con noticias y entretenimiento en tendencia los sábados a las 7 de la tarde. Te esperamos por el canal 92 de Comcast, nuestra página de Facebook TV8 Conexión Latina, nuestro canal de YouTube TV8 Bell Good Morning Bell o nuestra página web tv8bell.com. Welcome to Hiring America, the television program that helps veterans find jobs and transition back into civilian life. Hi everyone, I'm Gigi Stone Woods. I'm truly honored to host this vital program. Reach out to the opportunities you see on this program by logging onto our website hiringamerica.net and by following us on social networking sites such as Twitter. We'll keep that information available throughout the broadcast and on our website 24-7. Now let's get down to business. Good morning, Bill. Now we are constantly showing off the interiors of beautiful restaurants and homes, but how do you put those together? Well, our brand new segment, Divine Design, will show you all how to do that. We took a look at Rugs Benedict and we talked about the flooring options that they provide. Welcome to Rugs Benedict here in Avon with all of your flooring needs. And joining us, we have Mandy Benedict, one of the owners here. Mandy, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for coming into the store today. It is such a beautiful store and a beautiful space here, but we're starting with the wood flooring here. What have we got? 
So we have a huge array of every species that you could like, the things that are going to be most durable in the mountain environment, the different finishes, the different colors, widths, um, patterns, just about anything that you're looking for, and things that will actually work in our mountain environment as well. Yeah, very, very uh, important when you're getting that flooring here. So obviously rugs Benedict, but it's so much more. We have the wood here, so many different types, right? Can you tell us how many kinds and what offerings you have? Yes, so we have a lot of engineered options which perform really, really well in the mountain environment. Think of engineering a bridge that you're going to create more stability. And because it's so dry here, you need to take into account like how the wood will perform. So we specialize in things that are going to perform really well in the mountains. Awesome, awesome. And with such a, you know, 70 people on staff about, uh, all professionals, uh, sometimes it's almost just as important as the installation as it is getting the wood, right? It is. We have incredible craftsmen. They're masters at installation and humidity and really just pulling everything together to make your job look perfect and stand the test of time. I love that. And we have so much more behind. Let's go take a look at some of these other ones, right? Yeah. And on the floor here. <laughs> we have a ton of display floors so you can imagine what it would look like in your actual space, as well as a lot of sample boards that you can check out and look at in your home as well. Okay. So one of the things that we um, kind of pride uh -huh. ourselves on is having unique options. So if you really want to feature an area of your home and, and create some uniqueness, we have all the options of parquets and herring bones and just some really interesting styles. Awesome, awesome. What, what else do people need to know about wood flooring here at Rugs Benedict? I would say the greatest thing is our design, our flooring design team will walk you through the entire process. The thing that I hear is people walk out the store all the time, they go, wow, that was so easy. I was not expecting that to be such an easy process. So really, if you come in, we'll take care of supporting you from A to Z, everything that you need. Yeah, so come on in, check out Rugs Benedict here in Avon. Uh, much more than rugs, it's all the flooring needs you have. So come on down, check out Rugs Benedict. Good morning, Vale. One of the longest running syndicated television series is back. America's Black Forum, a weekly series highlighting the latest in our lifestyles, business, entertainment, and finance. We introduce you to entrepreneurs who are making their mark in the business world and leaders who are fighting for change. Welcome to America's Black Forum. Tune in each week to know what's happening in our world today on America's Black Forum. I'm Amy Goodman, host of Democracy Now! Our independent news hour offers diverse perspectives and unique opinions often unheard in the mainstream media, live as the news unfolds. Tune in for Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report, weekday mornings at 9 and evenings at 6 on TV8 Vale, Comcast Xfinity, Channel 92. There's more for you on Channel 92. Tune into Coffee with America and start your day in the right direction, where we go over the latest and greatest in health, lifestyle, entertainment, and more. Start your day off on Coffee with America. I'm Danella Richard. I've made a career traveling the world. I've worked for some of the biggest names in travel. And now I've traded in my business suit for a swimsuit. Swimming with the sharks, swinging at the edge of the world, throwing back a few shots, or shall I say spirits. <laughs> Eating some of the best cuisine and even making a few furry friends along the way. I invite you to come along with me and discover the world. Join us in exploring the everyday lives of community members here in the Vale Valley. Hear their inspiring stories of how they came here, their contributions to our community, and why they chose to call this place home. We want you to be one of our neighbors. If you would like to be featured or nominate someone to be featured, please send an email to danielle at tv8vale.com. We look forward to featuring your story right here on TV8.
Hey, it's your boy, Nephew Tommy, your host for an all-new season of Black College Quiz, where the nation's best and brightest display their knowledge of black history and culture while competing for prizes and scholarships. So get ready to see HBCU Nation take the academic field. Black College Quiz! BCQ! Black College Quiz! BCQ! Black College Quiz! BCQ! Yeah, man. I'm Clinton Griffiths, the host of Ag Day Television. Get the latest news about crops, livestock, rural living, and so much more from our award-winning team. Follow the food you eat from the field to the store to your table every day. Because what's happening on the farm matters to you and your family. Watch Ag Day weekdays. Well, it sure has been a jam-packed show, just as I promised at the beginning. I'm your host, Kimberly Pro, and thanks so much for joining me on Good Morning Vale. We'll see you next time. Good morning, Vale. See what lies in store for you. There's so many things to see and do. Summer, winter, spring, or fall. You're home in the Rockies, has it all.